I was challenged to take a rice cooker and turn it into this Fue Coco from this animation. Well, challenged isn't exactly the best word for this, because it was more so the product of harassment. Let me explain. Back in April of last year, NCH Productions made this cute animation of a Fue Coco rice cooker. If you scroll down the comment section of the original video, lots of people wanted this thing to be real. But no one was more excited than this one account on Instagram. Ever since posting the Rock and Roll a Pencil Sharpener video, every single post afterwards has been bombarded by the exact same demand from this guy. I mean, it got bad. And realistically, just look at this thing. Its design has so many curves, I can't model that from scratch. It also has a bunch of moving parts I'd have to engineer. It deals with a bunch of heat, which is a no-go for 3D printed plastic. There's just no way I'm gonna be able to do this. But man, do people like Pokemon projects. This project isn't gonna be easy, so let's start with what actually has to be done. To match the animation, this project's gonna to have to have a button so the lid can open, a slider so it can start cooking, lights in its eyes to indicate that it is cooking, and finally, steam that exits out of its nose. Now, obviously I'm not gonna design a rice cooker from scratch, so I'm gonna need to use an existing one as my base. After a long time searching, I think this one's gonna do the job. And somehow it even matches the exact same colors. Coincidence? I think not! And one month later, here it is. It's pretty close to what I need, but there's a few key differences. The button to open the device is up top, and to start the cooker, you slide this down. So I'm going to need to swap those functions from the animation. The next thing I learned is not only did it come with this funny looking plug, but it also needed this $35 voltage converter practically made of tungsten to work with American outlets. Finally, when you push down on the switch, there's some LEDs that indicate that it's cooking, and I should be able to reroute that to the eye somehow. But after playing around with the rice cooker for a bit, I accidentally snapped some of the plastic near the hinge, so I'll go ahead and order another one so we can really tear this thing apart. Let's start with these ears, which unfortunately need to go so I can make my 3D print fit. Need to make sure I can actually saw through this or we're gonna be in trouble. All right, that's totally doable. It also seems like all of the steam is vented through here, so I'll find a way to divert it to the nose later. Now let's really take this thing apart. I'm in. And this is what the inside of a rice cooker looks like for all you sickos that are into electronic gore. Don't mind me, I'm just here to harvest the LEDs. And now, I can't beat around the bush any longer. It's time to actually make some models for this thing. Let's grab this Fue Coco model here and see what we can do in Tinkercad. And after waffling around for a whole afternoon, this is uh, the best I could do. The issue is the rice cooker and the actual in-game model are substantially different. So it was time to do the unthinkable. Learn 3D modeling. In this Splendor video, and at the end of the day, I was finally able to create... <laughs> no, I just hired someone on Fiverr to do it. And he did do a pretty good job, so if you're looking to have your cartoon sculpted into a 3D model, I'll have his account in the description below. Now, as good of a job as he did, there's still a lot that needs to be done before I can slap it on a rice cooker. Wow, zowie. Yeah, that wowie zowie took me five days of modeling and prototyping. I mean, hollowing the whole thing out, remodeling the eyes, redesigning his hair to be the push button, and giving him a big juicy tail takes time, Extra right? Thick. But I think everything's good to go, so let's get to the final printouts. And if you want to print out this project or any other project I've made, I just revamped my Patreon, so you can make a single payment of $5 for any of the projects such as this one, or you can subscribe to the Lab Scientist tier for $5 a month and download every single project for my channel, and have access to my exclusive Patreon channels where I can help you along the way. Anywho, now that everything is printed out, it's time for the final assembly. First, I'll take the LEDs from the Fue Coco and reroute them. And since the rice cooker is going to get pretty hot, I'm using the silicon sealer for the solder joints and all the plastic parts as well. Speaking of which, I'm also using it to seal in some silicon tubes that will hopefully reroute the steam to the nostrils. Next, I hot glued the hair mechanism down to the rice cooker's button, and now I can finally put all the rest of the pieces together. And the arms are attached by magnets, because, you know, contractual obligation to reach my magnet quota for the video. And now, I think it's finally time for testing. The hair button works, 
the eyes light up when it's on, and we can press down on its stomach to start cooking. But will everything work when I pour in some water and rice? For whatever reason, I've never been able to get a project with water vapor working right. So this was a big moment. Will I finally succeed at combining Pokemon with Steam? After eight grueling minutes, I had my answer. Steam actually came out of its nose. Oh, and some water boogers, I guess. And the rice? Well, I'm happy to say it was cooked perfectly. But can the Fue Coco cooker make more than just rice? Is it capable of making a full meal? I say we test this out. Babish style. Uh, so if you don't know who Babish is, he's like the biggest cooking channel on YouTube. So if you haven't seen one of his videos, uh, you'll still enjoy the rest of this video. You'll be fine. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Binging with Big Rig, and this week we're going to be taking a look at the Fue Coco Rice Cooker from NCH Productions. Now, Fue Coco comes from Scarlet and Violet, and in that game you can make a bunch of sandwiches, but I don't think that'd be super interesting to be making in a rice cooker. So instead, we're heading to the Galar region where you can make a bunch of different curries. And since Pokemon hails from the land of Japan, we're going to be cooking up a traditional Japanese curry, starting with a cup of rice washed multiple times to ensure that any of the excess starch is removed. Now in the rice cooker, we're going to put in the washed rice and one cup of water and set this guy to the side while it cooks. Next, we'll be cutting up a medium onion and fighting back the tears as it assaults your eyes. Now we're gonna take two boneless, skinless chicken thighs and cut them into about one inch slices. Now we're gonna skin three mini potatoes. Any type will do, as long as they're not russet, otherwise they'll just melt in the pot. And hopefully your peeling skills are a bit more appealing than mine. And finally, we're gonna chop this up into some thick slices before moving on to our carrot. After peeling it, we're gonna to attempt to cut it Rangiri style by slicing it at an angle, turning it a quarter, and then slicing it at an angle again. I think this method would have been easier with a larger carrot, but you make do with what you have. Now we're gonna move on to using this cheese grater looking thing. I don't know what it's called and I'm not gonna look it up, but we're gonna use it on some fresh ginger to pasteify it until you get a little over a teaspoon's worth. Then we're gonna take a quarter of an apple and do the exact same thing until we get to the skin. In the same bowl, we're also going to sprinkle in some freshly chopped garlic before setting the bowl aside. By this point, your rice should be done and removed from the pot. So after oiling the pot, we'll take our onion, occasionally opening it back up to stir until the onions have that nice caramel color. Next, pour in one cup of chicken stock. And after having your cooking show interrupted by your roommate, we can place in the chicken, the vegetables, and the bowl with all that goo. Now for the most controversial part of the video, I'm going to be using this packaged curry roux. Apologies to Joshua Weissman fans for not making it from scratch. You don't need this. The power of this can be harnessed. And where? Where do you manifest that power? You manifest it in here. We're going to take about half this package, slice it into pieces, and gently lower it into the middle of the pot so it doesn't burn on the sides as it cooks. Now that everything's in, we can power on the rice cooker and slide Foy Coco to the side as he'll be cooking for 35 minutes. But while that's going on, we can prepare our final additions, starting with some dried chilies. I'm adding a bunch of this blender, but that's not how many will be ending up in the final curry. And since the blender's cord wasn't long enough, I had to do this off screen. Now in a cup, we're gonna put a generous squeeze of honey, one teaspoon of soy sauce, a generous teaspoon of spicy ketchup, and another generous teaspoon of those dried up chilies. And now all there is left to do is wait for the cooking process to finish. A bit over a half an hour later, we'll slide white cocoa back into frame, and we'll add that sweet yet spicy slurry into the mix. All there's left to do is plate it up with some rice and we have ourselves some Fue Coco curry. And not to toot my own horn, but this stuff is delicious. But I made it and I know that's my own opinion, so I'm gonna have it go head to head against the only restaurant in my area that actually makes Japanese curry. And I invited some friends over for a blind taste test as well. We're gonna see what they think is the restaurants, which one's mine and which one's their favorite. Uh, we gonna start with the left one, cause I ain't right. Mmm. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see, let me see. Mmm. Okay. Here's your A. Wow. Okay. Mmm, <laughs> this one's really good. Mmm. Oh yeah, this one's delicious. Mmm. I think... This one's very, this feels homemade. I'm gonna say this is the one that you made and this one is from the restaurant. Okay, which one's your favorite? This one. So the one on your right 
Uh huh. It's from the Foy Coco Rice Cook. <gasps> There's no way! Can I. Oh! And that's the re. You did me right, man. This is good. <laughs> you really killed that. What the heck was this? <laughs> it's great. Subscribe. Oh, okay. Yoink. All right. Oh, that's good. Mmm. It's spicy, but this feels like a level of spice that Matt would think is tame. Mm-hmm. Mmm. I got some chicken in there. Hmm. Pretty savory. These are both very good. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like the one on the left is yours because you just love spice, and that one has, that one's spicier, in my opinion. The one on the right, a little, a little more um, seasoned. I don't know. I mean, not seasoned, but like it, it doesn't have as much uh, kick to it, you know. I feel like this is something that you'd make for yourself. This one's my favorite of the two. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, that's hard. Uh, <laughs> I feel like the right one. So the one on the right is from the Foy Coco Rice Cooker. Okay. <laughs> Actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel stupid. <laughs> no, you crossed me up, but no, that that's good. That's yeah. really good. Thanks. I also appreciate how much you, more chicken you got. Oh, like, oh my God. Yeah. And the rice. It's that's all you man. <laughs> well, in my mind, that's an absolute success. With one exception. This is Fuecoco after all, a fire type Pokemon that resembles a pepper, so I think I went a little light on the spices. So I'm gonna remake everything all over again, but this time I'm tripling the chili flakes and adding a bit of ghost pepper sauce as Fuecoco evolves into Skeledurge, which is a ghost and fire type Pokemon. And the end result is a much spicier mix that packs a punch without killing you. And I finally think I earned my apron's title of Spicy Boy. Special thanks to my executive level patrons. Jameson Zabalos, Marco Carini, Evan Timmerman, Pow Pow, Don Neko, Zebra Mang, and finally, Sally and Dave.